Father, we thank you for today, God. We thank you for the, for the word from heaven, God. We thank you for the revelation and truth, God. We ask for your word to work inside of our hearts, God, to pull up out of things out of our hearts, God, that don't belong there. Father, we ask you to sow good seed in our good heart, Father God. We ask you to give us a good heart, God, a heart of flesh, God. Just as you did when we were born again, Father God, we ask you, Father God, to teach us how to till our hearts, to keep your, your garden, Father God, a place where you want to walk in, Father God, that we could eat the fruit of what is in the garden of our heart, Father God. Let us have revelation and insight to know what the enemy is doing and trying to do to us, God. Bring revelation, insight today, God. Let your word come forth with fire, with accuracy. Father, hide, us, hide me behind the cross today, Lord. Let your, your blood speak a better message, God. Let your freedom reign Amen. in this nation, in the nations of the world, and inside of us, Father God. doesn't matter how much bondage we can get in the flesh, God, and the outside in the world, but let us be free in our hearts, God. Free in the Spirit, God. Yes. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, there's freedom, God, and we grab hold of that like never before, Father, for such a time as this. Today's message is called Seeds of Offense. Seeds of Offense. I'm going to be reading from Matthew chapter 13, 1 through 44 to lay a foundation and then go into what God has been downloading to me um, in the last little while. The same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the seaside, and a great multitude were gathered together unto him, and they went into the ship and sat, and they spoke this parable, saying, Behold, the sower went out forth to sow. And when he sowed, when he sowed some seeds, so let's get it clear right away that seeds are words. And then later on we're going to find out what words do and what words, because many of us know this, but we need to be reminded because sometimes we get so caught up in the world and so caught up in our own thing and so caught up in our own troubles and things, we allow things to creep into our heart. And this is what God makes. God says we are the tillers of our heart. He'll help you, but you got to submit to His Word and to His Spirit and to His ways. If not, the enemy will help you. <laughs> Get you a little weedy, ugly garden. God wants to look at our heart as a nice garden with good trees and good good plants and nice looking things so and when he sowed some seeds fell on the wayside and devoured and the fowls came and devoured up some in stony places where they had not much earth and for they sprung up because they had no depth of earth and when the sun was rising, it scorched them. It's talking about different ways the seeds get destroyed. But God's going to take us in a little further. He's being an example of the farmer and how everything in the world is seeds. There's seed, time, and harvest. Some of the things that you do that you might forget that you're doing are the wrong things or the thoughts or the words that you say. You just forget about them. But later on, maybe three weeks, maybe four weeks, maybe five weeks, maybe five years, these seeds of the devil, the seeds you're doing, start to manifest. You don't even realize why you're in the place that you are because it could have been way back when, because sometimes things don't manifest right away, so you don't even pay attention to them. But if you pay attention to the garden, if you pay attention to your heart right away, you can make sure that things don't pop up later in your life, pop up later in your relationships, pop up later even with you and God. And when the sun was up, and it, and it was scorched, and it talks about that, and it goes, and some fell on good ground, and that's what we're supposed to be, because we are born again, we have gotten a new heart, and Ezekiel speaks that God takes the stony heart and gives us a heart of flesh, right? So we, when we start out, we start out good. I mean, we start out bad because of the fall of mankind and all that, been all the things of the world, but then God gives us a chance when we're born again. He gives us that heart, and then He says, now keep it good, keep it fresh, keep it clean, keep it pure, Right? Because only the pure in heart shall what? See God. We want to see God every day, every minute, every hour, and everything that we do. And that's what keeps us, is keeping Him. We want to be in a mirror image of Him. So it says, And some fell on good ground and brought forth some 30, 40. He's not saying you have to have a hundred full, but you got to be producing good stuff. Though whose have ears to hear, hear. 
And then I'm going to jump to Luke real quick because Luke takes it only on uh, 10 verses real quick how Luke said it. So it went out to sow a seed and sowed. Some fell on the wayside and it's trodden down. It goes down and says, and then on the hard places the rock. And then it, some fell among thorns and it choked with it and choked it out. And then some fell on good ground and sprang up and bear fruit hundredfold. See, the fruit, God's looking for fruit. You'll know my disciples by what? Not how many scriptures, not where they go, not who they hang out with, by their fruit. So God's looking for fruit, and so is the world. And he says, and when he sat and he said these things, and the disciples asked him, what is the kingdom and what are these parables? I'm paraphrasing, don't take them, because I don't want to be reading scripture all day. I want to be preached. Now the parable of this, the seed is the word of God. Don't you know that the, the devil has words too? The good seed is the Word of God. The real seed is the Word of God. The Word of God, that's what he's saying. You've got to receive the Word of God and not receive the other words that want to come in too. Because your, gar, your heart, he's saying receive them in your heart. Those are the wayside where those that hear the Word, but the devil come and taketh away the Word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. So the devil can come and snatch the good seeds out of your heart. And then the ones with the rock, they hear the word and receive it with joy. We know that happens a lot of times. People get, oh yeah, and then all of a sudden they disappear. Or they uh, end up getting in a place where they, they, they're real happy about it. And then all of a sudden it doesn't get the roots down and, 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 and get the fruits, the fruits of longevity. And some fell among the thorns in which have heard the word of God choked them out. Because the cares, this is why I wanted to get this one mainly in Luke. The cares and riches and pleasures of this life bring no fruit unto perfection. See so again, fruit. See how Jesus uses all these things? Well, he didn't say he can stop. He wants to show us even deeper of things, even the reality of now, because things that they walked in then, they have, we have different kinds of fruits here. So God wants to open our eyes so it gets in our spirit. That's how Jesus likes to give these pictures and parables of things so we can understand them in the depths of our heart. But that which is on good, good ground and they which are of the honest and good heart, having heard the word of a good heart, right? Since you get, like, the, the devil can get your heart bad, you won't even hear things anymore. That's what he wants to stop your hearing. Here. That's why... You should think everyone in the church should hear the word of the Lord, right? But he says this all the time. He says, those that have ears to hear. He's talking to the church now in Revelation 2. Those that have ears to hear, hear what the Spirit. So the devil can take your ears to hear by me- taking your heart. The devil can take your ears by messing up your heart. Because your heart is what really we hear by the Spirit. We don't move by emotions, but we're moved by the Spirit. But we're going to get deeper and deeper into this. Just hold on. And he keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Now I'm going back to Matthew. Number 10. Matthew chapter 13 again. And his disciples, he talks about the parables. And he said, he answered and said unto them, Because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but not, not to them it is not given. For whosoever has, it shall be given. And whoever shall have more abundance, but whatsoever he has from him, shall it be taken away, even that which he has. Therefore I speak to you them in parables, because they seeing not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. And into them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing you shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you shall see, and not perceive. Now what do you think? Many Christians are not understanding things of the Spirit anymore. They're carnally minded because they're so baptized in the world. But God wants us to continue to baptize us in the Holy Spirit, in His ways, in His words, in His thinking, and in His heart. He wants us to have the same heart and same mind as Him. And the Bible does say that we have the mind of Christ. For the people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have been closed, lest any time they should see, and it goes on and on, and be converted. Well, we've been converted. So let us not become like that. Everyone that's been born again has been converted. 
See, Peter walked with Jesus, but he wasn't even yet converted yet. Because he said, Peter, but when you are converted, because he had to get the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he had to wait in the upper room. Yeah, yeah. He, a lot of people walk with Jesus to read the Word because he is the Word become flesh, and they read them in the pages, but they don't really are not converted. But once you're converted, you have that heart. Now God's going to judge you even more because you are the tiller of your heart. Blessed are the eyes, for they see, and the ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired these things which you see and have not seen them, and hear those things which you hear and have not heard them. Hear, therefore, the parable of the sower. When one hears the word of the kingdom and understands it and not, here comes the wicked one and catches away that which is sown in his heart. Him that receives seed by the wayside. It goes on and on the same parable. But then it says down here, it says, about having no root in himself, not letting the God's things take over and not uprooting the other things that get in your heart. Because we're going to be focusing now on the other things that get in your heart that you are supposed to be keeping out of your heart. And that's why this message is called Seeds of Offense. Because offenses are like seeds. And the more you allow offenses to take root or in your heart, it will choke out the good seed of life. It'll choke out love. It'll cho choke out patience. It'll choke out all the fruits of the Spirit. That's what it does. That's what the devil's up to. He knows he can't steal your salvation in two days. But if he can slowly get you to be a miserable or better person, then you're fruitless. And Jesus, people... You won't know you as a disciple. It doesn't. So that's his job, because now he's his job before that was keeping you unsaved. Now that you've gotten saved, then he turns it into now. Let me destroy any kind of fruit that this person can have in their life. Let me destroy their relationship with one another. Let me destroy their relationship with hearing their God, because if they don't even hear their God anymore, they're going to hear me. And he says he has received seed among the thorns, and it goes on and on. It says. That received on the good ground, he that heareth the word and understand it, he beareth fruit and bringeth forth fruit, some a hundredfold. Another parable even spoke about the sower of the seed in the field. Why men slept. See, that's what happened. The church fell asleep. See, when things look all great in the government, oh, everything's good now, we fall asleep. Because now they'll make all the right decisions. We don't have to worry about it. So sometimes God's got to allow things to happen to wake up His church, to wake us up, to know that we need to stay on guard. We need to continue to guard our heart for out of it flows what? The issues of life. Received, and He says... And when men slept, when the church falls asleep, the enemy comes and sows all kinds of things in the church, in your heart. And when men slept, the enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. And he went his way. See, there's not supposed to be any tares in the church. People try to say, oh, you know, tares in the wheat are growing. No, the church is supposed to be the wheat. It's harvested, goes to heaven. He doesn't. It's the world that has the tares. So when we're in the world, we need to protect the wheat. Or else we can be choked out and the wheat has no weediness to it. Like salt has no saltiness. If the salt is lost, it's a, you know the whole thing. That's what's going on. So it's all about submission to the power of God and the cross and guarding our hearts. Guarding our hearts. That's the only thing He has to destroy us is to get to our hearts. That's how He destroys marriages, to poison the heart. Poor, that's how relationships get something in your heart to make you bitter against something or someone. And see, Jesus never let that happen. Even though he said the truth, even though he made them get so angry and wroth and seethed in their teeth and whatever he did, it wasn't anything that he was doing. It was because he wasn't allowing them to get in his heart. And it, it, it made them so bitter crazy that they gnashed at their teeth because they couldn't get him and that's how we're all supposed to be and that's how God is going to make his church he said I'll have a I will have a, a church without spot or wrinkle where the gates of hell will not prevail. well the gate is really your heart what do you say Jesus come into my mind no first you say Jesus come into my heart love God with all your heart mind body and soul and all that is within you so the door is really the heart to everything so you got to stand there and you need to be protecting your heart. And why men slept, the enemy came and sowed these other things. Well, the, what does the enemy use? 
I don't know, the devil might come in dreams or, uh, you know, at night or something or just give you thoughts, bad thoughts, but he usually uses the people. People at the grocery store, people in your life, family members, personal friends, people in the church. Obviously, he's going to use people, provoke somebody else to do something to get your heart bad, so then he got both of you, and then he goes on and on and on. That's what he does all day. This one and this one and this one and this one. He doesn't even realize and you're just so... Oh. And then all of a sudden you're, okay, I'm not going to talk to this person, this person. And you think those seeds that you just... You think you can just avoid all these people and places and things and all of a sudden that seed time and harvest doesn't come about and all of a sudden three years later you're going to be so happy and God's just going to say, it's fine. No, he's like, you need to not let any seeds of offense take root in your heart and guard your heart for out of it flows the issues of life because it is... What is going on all the time in the Word of God? And then it talks about when it comes up, and, and it says the enemy came and sowed these tares among the wheat and went his way. And when they sprung up, see, you don't see it right away. You don't even notice it right away. But if you have the Holy Spirit, He's convicting you right away, so take care of it right away. Because we have Him. We have Him to help us to repent, help us to take care of things right away. He said unto them, The enemy has done this. The servant said unto him, Will thou we go and gather them up? And this is about the world, about the, the devil's workers in the world. But we're talking about our heart right now. And it goes on and on about the, the seed and the birds and the branches and all these things. And I'm going to skip right down. The leaven's the same way. A little bit just expands. It doesn't go until you uproot things. He said unto him that soweth is the good seed. I'm going to keep going right here. The kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hidden in the field. Well, let God put all this treasure. The field is your heart now in the spiritual realm. How many seeds does it take to overtake a garden? God gives us these things in the world to like understand the kingdom. Right? And... Some people have, you need to be a full-time gardener. We're supposed to be rich in faith and all that thing. So rich people usually, you know, the real rich people, they have a gardener all the time. Well, you need to be like that. And they have a pretty, like you drive by and like, oh, their landscape is perfect. Well, it's easy. Someone else is doing it for them, but God's not going to do it for you. And these other people can't do it for you. So we got to do it ourselves. We can't pay for these things. These are things we pay with our heart, with our, with our actions, with our submission to the Holy Spirit and submission to the Word of God. That's what does it, following Jesus' Word of God. Seeds of offense turn out to be weeds stealing life. What do weeds do? They steal the sun. Because all of a sudden they grow over and they choke out or they do these things. It talks about that they choke out the good stuff. They steal the water in the bottom, they get water up, but now the weeds are sucking the water up too. Sucking up all the living water, all the words of God, sucking it up in the ground. They steal territory, right? They start taking over and they push out if they're stronger because weeds are so strong, they'll grow, they don't even... They steal what? Nutrition, nutrients in the ground. The weeds start to take the nutrition that was supposed to be for what was planted by you, the gardener, the little flowers, Right? Go ahead, plant a garden and leave. Leave for a year and do nothing and come back. You're going to be like, because oh! like little by little people's gardens get, and once in a while they'll pull a few. They never get totally taken over. And God doesn't want that either. God doesn't want that, okay, a little weeds here. No, it's, so it's acceptable. No, the perfect will of God is, is, is His will, is no weeds in the garden. So we're like, but if you left town and went for a while, you go see. You know, those people, you don't realize, they move out, they get evicted, or they... They get this, uh, what do they call that, um, when the bank takes foreclosed. foreclosed houses and you leave and see the grass. Gets, it's like, like in three months, it's like, oh my gosh. You, you, you didn't realize there's those little things that people maintain. And then there's some people, you drive by and everyone gets jealous, that yard. It's immaculate. It's always edged. There's no weeds. It's always got the mulch and everyone's always envious of that one. And their grass is always so green, right? And get into that in a minute. Stealing the pre and what is the else is it? Steals the beauty. The weeds steal the beauty of the flowers and all the things in the garden. Steals the presence, the atmosphere. The, the, it chokes out the life, the good of, of God. The cares of the life do that. We're talking about people's garden. Our own. Satan wants to try in the flesh to fix something. 
See, faith, Satan wants you to try in the flesh to fix something that can only be done in the Spirit. can only be done by the power of God. And people that are prideful never do that. That's why the, well, most people didn't get married because they didn't like each other. They get divorced because they let pride take over. And one is finally saying, I'm not taking it. One finally doesn't give in. And there it is. Once, once there's a negative agreement, once there's that thing that I'm not going to do this. And once you make, see, it's a vow too. And when that vow is in the heart, then all of a sudden they block that. They start forgetting all the good things and they start remembering all the bad things. And all of a sudden there's hate where there was supposed to be love. There was disunity where there's supposed to be unity. There's distrust where there used to be trust because you wouldn't marry somebody that you didn't trust. Well, it's same with God and the word of God and one another because we're one in the spirit. Just like everything we deal with in the world. If people's lawns, if you don't take care of your lawn, I said some of that right now, but so look at this. Okay, somebody's lawn, right? Usually the lawns don't have a line, like they don't stop lawns. Usually if you go down the street, usually lawns are flowing with other lawns. And all of a sudden, you see... This lawn is good, and the one next to it's kind of bad, bad, and you go down, it's because the other one, it's like fading. It's, but there's, it's really connected. Like your neighbor's lawn, unless you like totally put a border or a wall or something, usually lawns, especially in Florida, flow into one another. And then this one guy like stops his, his fertilizer right there, you know. I always went a little bit over just because I understood, you know, I want to you know, get that lawn, but they're like, okay, you got your fertilizer. But they take care of that and right there. But what ends up happening is, I, like, I think about this dollar weed I used to have. And there was this dollar weed that would grow under there, man. It was so hard. You use all these chemicals, like, to get rid of it. And that's, like, sin. And that's, like, these things, offenses. And it's, like, the dollar weed. And it grows and pops up, and it's so hard. Well, if you don't stop it, it goes all the way. So it doesn't, the, the dollar weed doesn't say, oh, well, um... This is the neighbor's lawn, so we're just going to stop right here. See how offenses and bad hearts affect everybody around you and, and close to you in it because we're supposed to be one spirit and together? Do you see what it does? It's like the dollar weed that goes and starts affecting that. But see, God's still is not going to say, well, uh, you know, I know that was so-and-so's dollar weed, and I understand that you didn't plant this dollar weed. He's just like, you better make sure that dollar weed don't get in your lawn or in your garden. I know the weed wasn't planted by you, but you got to make sure it doesn't get in, weed gets in your garden, you're going to pluck it out. Say, well, I didn't sow that seed, that she, you know, they did that. Why do I have? And that's what people, because God's looking at us in our heart. Hebrews 12, 1 through 17 says this, Wherefore seeing we have compassed about a great cloud of witnesses, and says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, set down on the right hand of the throne of God, for considering him to endure, that endured such contradictions, sinners against himself, lest he be weird and faint in your minds, you have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation that speaketh unto the children. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord. Despise not God getting on your case to take care of your heart. Despise not God trying to yell the word at you because you're not, the enemy's making you fall asleep and sowing tares in your heart. Despise not the chastening of the Lord nor faint at his rebuke. For when the Lord, lo who He loveth, He chastens and scourges every son He receives. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as sons. For what son is it whom the Father does not correct or chasten? For if you are without chastisement, therefore you are not partakers and you are bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have had our fathers in the flesh who corrected us. And, gave, and we gave them reverence. How much rather shall we be subjected unto the Father of spirits and live? Subject unto the Holy Spirit and live. Subject unto God and live. 
For there verily a few days chasten us, there is our own pleasure, but for our profit, that we might be partakers of His holiness. His holiness is set apart, not holier than thou. And we're going to have all things in our flesh that are not perfect. But holiness means submitted unto Him, so His righteousness becomes ours. Not doing our own righteousness and our own works, but submitting to the power of the cross. The cross means nothing to them that are dying, to them that are parent. But to us, the Bible says, it is the power of God. So why don't we take advantage of it? We have the cross. We have the power. We have the blood. And you resist it, then the Bible speaks about what happens to people that resist Him after they receive Him. Wherefore, lift up your hands which hang low and your feeble knees, and make straight the path of your feet, lest... That which is lame be turned out of the way. That's what God wants to stop. The devil does not stop. Oh, he got saved. Okay, let's go on to the next one. He says, oh, he got saved. Let's get more demons now. But let it rather be healed. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see God. Shall he, uh, no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest you, man, man fall from grace, lest any, look, root, of bitterness springing up trouble you. Root of bitterness in your heart, choking out your heart. And therefore many are defiled. What? The root of bitterness. How does the root of bitterness? Having seeds of offense. Seeds of, of hate. What, is, end up, what does offense end up turning into? Hate. Always hate. You just, oh, but yeah. you just think you can forget about it. Go pull a picture of that person. Or someone say that person's name. All of a sudden you'll remember and hate boils up. That is a bitter root. And God will not put up with it. He does not want us to have any bitter words. And that's why we have the power to protect our hearts from the get-go. And God gives us the power to what? Become the sons of God. The sons of holiness. The sons and daughters of righteousness. That's where this Leviathan, it's like the Leviathan thing about all that is like, then I, someone said this too, but I don't even understand. I don't know why I'm saying this right now, but it's like, he gets a hold of you. We're like, oh, no big deal. But someone said there's like a, a, a death roll. So is that like an alligator grabs you, but then he twists you right down into the weeds and the murky of the water. Is that a death roll? Yes. To take, the devil wants to do a death roll in your heart and take your heart down and out. Because then you're no good for God. Oh, you might get saved. You might, I mean, you might go to heaven. You might not. But God, why would you gamble against the word of God? And that's what the devil wants to say. God would never say, he understands. It's okay. No, the Bible says it's not okay. Guard your heart. The Bible says it's not okay to allow offense. The Bible says offense is a killer. The Bible says seeds of offense. The Bible says offense is the bait of Satan. And the devil will make you feel like you have a right to be offended. That's the biggest. He's, what, who, who is he the father of? Okay, so why would you believe him? So the Bible never said that. You start believing things that the devil says or people say or the world says. Why are you listening to the world in the first place? Who cares what the world says? Oh, I was at work and they end the break. Oh, yeah. That's what women, they get, they, get, they go talk to all these women that have been in a divorce or been separated, been this, and they just hear. and Because it, it, it sears their conscience to believe a lie. And that's what the world's in right now. They're, they're not believing truth anymore. They're turning truth into lie and lies into truth. And, and then reprobate minds like, it's right now, really, but it really isn't. It's called deception. It's called an illusion. It's called, that's what the devil does. That's why he's a ma magician of deceiving the whole world. And so we have the word, and that's what is going to stop him. We have the power. That's what's going to stop him. But God needs to submit your will for it to happen. And the will of God is perfection. Lest there be any fornicated, profane person as Esau, who one morsel of me. Then I said, because of the flesh, because of pride, because of offenses, sold his birthright. So you know what? I'll hold on to this offenses because it's more important than freedom. It's more important than love. It's more important than being forever. Pride, right? I'm going to hold on to that because I deserve it. They don't understand. Nobody understands me. Nobody understands this. Well, the Bible doesn't say there's different categories. It is. That's why we got the black and the white all the time. People don't understand. It's not black and white. It's not that we're perfect or not. It's like it is what it is. You can't manipulate the Word of God. You can't change the Word of God. God doesn't move in our emotions or things. The Word of God stands and it adores forever. Amen. 
And we need to learn and harp and repent and, 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 and submit to the word of God. Or the devil has full right. See, the devil's like, God, they know the word. Look, I was like, I can't do nothing. That's what's going on. I can't. God's and you're like, God, and I can't because the word, they know the word. God's like, it's, and, and his heart's breaking. And people are being back into drugs, back into bondages, back into uh, marital affairs. And they cry out like Esau, oh, oh, God. And, but they, they're, they're sorry for all, all the things, but they have no, no final repentance because the word of God is freedom. And that's where God weeps. And the devil will make you believe that the word of God does not apply to you. Because you have this special case. And, 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 and you cannot allow that. You need to pluck all those lies out of your heart, mind, and soul. Because once he gets in your heart, then he starts to take over your mind. And you don't think right. You don't have the mind of Christ anymore. You have the mind of what? The enemy, the world. And it says, after he had inherited the blessing, he was rejected. Rejected. For he had found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Thinking about your, loving your neighbor, right? Think about the lawn again, the weeds, offering. You're like, you even want them to fix their lawn. You're like, I'll buy you the products. They don't even want to. You buy them the products, give them the product, which is the word of God for us. Give them the word of God, but... They don't even want to use it. You'll put it on their doorstep and they'll just ignore it. It's like, then you're like, you want to jump over to, and their lawn and start taking care of their garden, their lawn, but what happens? And the devil comes and starts messing up your. So God's like, you can't. This is a personal garden. You and God. There's no way you're going to stand on judgment and say, well, you know what? This person messed up my garden. God's like, that was your garden. What are you talking about them? I don't care if they came and sowed. I'm going to let you know the seeds that were sown by the enemy. you got to go pluck them out. Are you going to pluck them out or are you going to water them and believe them because you want to? It's like that. It's like you see that. And then it's all. So you can stop. But what do you do? You make a thought. You put that thing. You stop it from coming in your lawn. And all of a sudden it's like you're putting up this, this imaginary wall because you have to. Because you have to keep your garden. Because what, what happens is you don't want another person's offense and there are weeds to come in so you have to do things that you don't even really naturally but if you have two people the same mind same spirit they have the same chemicals the same word of god and their neighbors right next to each other and all of a sudden both of them are doing and taking care of their lawn or their garden they look beautiful together but you'd never go drive down a street now and look at different lawns go do this in the next couple of days and see what i'm talking about why because each person each owner has their own property and you'll see how people take care of it. And it's just like our hearts in the kingdom of God. It's just the same. God was showing me all this this morning. Go ahead, two or, two or three neighborhoods and drive down. And you'll see who really takes care of the garden. You can't say, well, and you know what? You'll see that. Somebody moves out, they sell their house, and all of a sudden a year later, it's a totally different yard. Why? Because it's a totally different owner. The yard's not just, it, doesn't, it wasn't the ground, it was taking care of it. You see that? We need to work extra, extra hard to keep our lawn, our garden free from weeds. And those weeds are, those seeds are offenses. The weeds are when the seeds start to sprout. When the offenses start to get out of the ground. So amazing how God uses the creation to try to speak to us in the spiritual realm. Obviously, a renter, it does not really apply to the renter because the renter don't own the land. But if the, if the person that's renting the property really cares, he'll get on the renter to, hey, you need to do this, spray this. And the other ones that's renting it, uh, and that's basically God gives us everything on, you know? It's like, God's like, this is how you do it. Here's the word of God. You can say, well, you know, I'm, I, it's not my, you know, you, you know, it's God's heart and he'll take care. That's what people always say. Oh, God, God, God knows my heart. People love to say, oh, God, but God knows my heart. Yeah, you, and the devil's making you think of when you were doing everything right and you totally forgetting about all the things you're not doing what God is telling you to do. Oh, God knows my heart. But the Bible says our heart, I'm going to get to that, is wicked. 
Oh yeah, you want God to know your heart? I don't think so. I believe God looks at the heart just like a satellite picture, like the body of Christ. You know, if you went up in a satellite and you looked at all the yards, but you, you couldn't see that because it's so small and everything, but like God looks at all the hearts in the church, and he, it, like lawns, He can see them all. And He can see the ones that are, and that's how He looks at the bride. And eventually, if you know, He wants a, a, a thriving, purple, red, beautiful, luscious heart together, beating as one in the, like the line of the tribe of Judah. And that's what He's doing. And the Bible says, with the abundance of what? The hearts, the mouth starts speaking. So eventually, you'll start speaking those things. You know it. You meet people all the time. like, give them 20 minutes to ramble on, and like two things out of it you really want to pay attention to, of to help them. And all the way, you already know, but you're like, you can't even get a word in because they're going to ramble on for 20 minutes about everything everyone else did, never looking at what they did or what they allowed in their heart. Because now, once Satan gets you, it's always somebody else. It's never you, but God's like, it's never anybody else. It's always you. That's the trick. That's the deception. It's always you because it's your heart. God has not ripped your heart out and give it to someone else and give them your and say, hey, let's play this game. And No, this is what he's looking at, our heart. Luke 6, 44 and, and for, through 46. For every tree is known by, so we can say every, every uh, well, there's some good that they call, I don't want to use weeds because, Man has said this is a weed, but there's some pretty weeds, so we don't want it, we can't even go there. But he's talking about a good tree produces good fruit. So what do we say? It's known by its what? Its fruit, its flowers, its figs. You cannot produce something that's not within, is what he's saying. What is within, you can't produce something on the outside. What is on the inside is going to come on the outside, is going to be produced. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, out of the good ground of his heart, bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man, out of the evil treasure, so it's like your heart's a treasure chest. What are you gathering? The, the Bible says, in a house are vessels of gold, silver, and there's vessels of wood, hay, and stubble. One burning, and for you know where, and one for glory. So it's like, what are you, what are you filling in that treasure chest? Because your heart's like a treasure chest of life. You can just put good stuff in it, right? You don't want a mixture of stuff and people go to try, oh, there's, look at that beautiful thing, and bam, they can't even get to that beautiful thing because they got all these thorns now. They're going to be like, I'm not even going to go in that treasure chest because it's like, there was, there's a lot of good stuff in there, but man, if I even try to touch that good stuff, I'm going to get all messed up. So I'm just going to not touch it, right? So out of the, bringeth forth that which is good and evil, out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not what I say? Why you call me Lord, but you don't follow my word? Then you say, okay, you call me Lord, but then you think you're following my word, but you're not following my word, because if you're following my word, it's power. So really, you're reading the word, but reading the word is not following the word. Following the word is... The manifestation. The word doesn't lie and the word has power. He said the kingdom of God is not in word but in power. So basically what he's saying, Paul is saying, if you're really following the word, if you believe in the word, you're preaching the word, the power follows. So there's always power following truth. Jesus didn't, have, didn't miss the mark. When he spoke, God moved. The Holy Spirit moved. Then let's see what James says. James 3, my brethren, be, there be many masters knowing that you shall receive a greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, that same man is a perfect man and is able, what? To bridle his whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouth and that we, they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. Be, Behold also the ships, though they be great and driven with fierce winds, yet they are turned about in a very small helm. Whithsoever they govern, they listen. He's saying, look how small the tongue is, but it can bring your whole direction of your life. The whole direction. Even the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. Behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire in a world of iniquity. 
so is the tongue among our members that defile the whole body and sets it on fire in the course of nature. And it is set for the fire of hell. For every kind of beast and birds and serpents and things of the sea is tamed and has been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tang. It is unruly, evil, full of deadly poison. So, knowing the scriptures, how do we tame the tongue? By having the heart. You can tame the heart, then you can control your tongue. If you don't have your heart right, you'll never be able to control your tongue, according to what the Word says. So that's why you hang out with people. Why are you getting someone a job and then, uh, uh, you know, you hire them eventually? You know, they could go on the interview. Oh, man, this is good. Then all of a sudden you're hanging out because the heart and it starts speaking. When, they start, when you start feeling comfortable, you start speaking things. And then we find out more things. Oh, I thought that person, I thought. Then we we're always like, I thought, I thought, because you thought, but you didn't, you, you, you know, when people, so that's when people, and then what the devil wants you to be so comfortable that you're right about everything and you can just say whatever you want to say. But watch this, because this gets a little deeper now. So out of the mouth comes blessing for the Father and curse we men and, and after the same similitude of God, the tongue no man can tame it says that out of the mouth proceeds blessings and cursings. Does a fountain bring forth the same place, sweet and bitter? Can a fig tree bring forth, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? So no, so can no man both yield good and bad, fresh water and, and it says salt water. Where, so there's like a mixture. It might be just a little bit of salt water or a little bit of bad, but it's still not river. What does Jesus say? My words are life. They might not sound like life to those that are dying because they hate it and everything they have to, but they're life. They're life. Even if they're being judged wrongly, they're still life because they come with power. Who is wise man and dude? So we want to ask God for wisdom too because we need wisdom in every situation of our life. Endued with the knowledge among you, let him show out a good conversation, his works with meekness and wisdom. Meekness is another word for humility. Because you know the Bible also says that God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. So even if we are struggling with our heart, if we humble ourselves, he'll even help us clean that He'll be like, okay, let's go out Saturday morning. I'm going to help you. You know, humble yourself. I'll help you. This right there. Remember what you said to this person. Remember you did this. Remember. And it's, well, you know, it might take all day, but you don't want to do it. Right? It's just not enough. Well, that's what happened. Well, it's not a big deal. It's just a couple little seeds. It's just a couple little weeds. And the next month, yeah, you know what? And you're like, then all of a sudden you're like, wow, man, that's going to take a month. I'm not doing that. Can we move? Because that's how I'm going to the garden. I'll start fresh there. That's what we say. Oh, can we move now? Because I'll just move the house because I just, this garden got taken away from me and I can't stand it. I love a beautiful garden. So we'll just move and start over. But God's like, that doesn't happen. You can't change your heart out because it's a heart. It's not a place, person, or thing. So it says, the tongue no man can tame, but we can Keep our heart pure. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your heart, see, it goes right from the mouth, right there in James. Right from the mouth. You say, wait, he's talking, I thought you were talking about word. Right to the heart, because this is the connection. Just like Jesus said the connection, Paul, uh, James is con uh, continuing on with the connection. The bitter envy and strife in your hearts, and lie not against the truth. The wisdom descended not from above, but is earthly. And he says, and they say, now you're operating like the world. Sensual, going by emotions. Your emotions are, are ruling you and not the Word of God. For where envy and strife there is confusion, that's witchcraft. You know, people say, oh, I'm on we put ourselves under witchcraft when we begin to not do what God tells us to do. And confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is pure, peaceable, gentle, easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy, and full of righteousness, is sown in peace 
of them that make peace. The fruit of righteousness is sown, right? A seed is sown, and God wants to sow all of those good seeds, all the fruits of this, or all nine of them. He wants that to be your garden. But what the devil comes to sow the weeds to choke out all the fruits of the Spirit, right? And then slowly you don't even realize. And then he says to guard your heart. Then we know that David, through the, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, or, or Solomon right here, and through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, said, Proverbs 4.23, Keep your hearts for out of it, Keep your heart with all diligence. Go look up diligence later. Diligence. It's like diligent, diligent. It's like I'm on it. Not, okay, I'm going to do that next week. You know, we're all going to go on a, you know, I'm going to start my diet. Next. No, you're going to, diligent is like, you're, right now, I'm convicted, I'm doing it. Oh, I'm going to do it next. That's what we end up doing, the devil, because we get lazy in the spirit. No, we need to do it now, diligently, diligently. Because it says diligently, for out of it, are of it are the issues of life. Most of our issues are because of our heart. All of them, basically. The good issues and the bad issues. This is tending the garden. And then we have the spirit of life and death, what we eat. So God wants us to eat our own fruit. Because we have a garden, we want to eat the fruit. So God wants to eat our own fruit. So Proverbs 18, 21, and this is, um, death and life are in the power of the tongue. Remember, we just, not that everything, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So death and life are the power of the tongue, but death and life is in your heart. Because, and there that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. So, the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if your heart's right, you'll, you'll be eating good fruit all the time. You see it? Your garden. You eat your own fruit. I'm going to close with these last two scriptures. You know, you might not have time today as we're playing music, but put some music on, ask God, tell Him, because that's what grace is all about. Living in grace is to have a nice garden anytime we decide to repent. We can, God can blow all this. That's how good it is. It isn't like what the devil wants you to see. Oh, look at that garden. It's going to take so much work. How powerful is the blood? How powerful are the words of life? How powerful is when we submit to God? How powerful when it says that God can take, only God can take Leviathan down. Nobody else can. Humble yourself. He Go low. And when you go low, what flushes out? The river runs to the lowest place. It's going to saturate the river of God, the the, the, the power of God, the blood of Jesus will do all that. See, the devil wants you to say, there's no hope. The devil wants you to think, oh no, I, it's, I'm just too messed up. That's what he, those are lies. See, you've already said those things in your mind. So you might not even speak them out of your mouth, but you're also eating the, you're also eating your thoughts of your heart. Because of course you can't say that. Everyone around you say, what are you talking? So you just think them and think them. So you're living in this world of, you're eating all these wrong, negative thoughts all the time. And then everyone doesn't even understand what you're going through. Yeah. And then you try to smile and say everything's okay, but really you've been eating your own thoughts. Because nothing in the Word of God says any of that. And the power of the cross means nothing. Them are perishing. But if you don't use the cross, you will perish too. The cross is power. And God gives us, He says, You, in time of need, what? When you got weeds in your garden. Go boldly to the throne of grace. Not because, not pridefully, boldly, hum, humbly, but boldly to the throne of grace. What do you mean, go boldly? What? I'm going in His name. Jesus did it. I'm going and boldly because of His righteousness. I'm going boldly because of what He did. He knows I can't be perfect, but I'm going to submit to Him because I have to have a good heart. I'm tired of living with the devil. I want to be in the presence of God. Yes. Jeremiah for 72 days is in the keepers of the field against the roundabout because they have seen, been rebellious against me. See, God's talking in the Old Testament all about these fields and things. But it, once we get in the New Testament, Jesus took all those things he read and learned and all, all the Torah and everything, and he applied them to the spiritual realm. 
And that's what, when we read these things, we can see more now, even if we read the Old Testament. The way of thy doings have procured these things unto thee. This is the wickedness because it is bitter, because it reaches unto thine heart. Jeremiah, it reaches unto thine heart. Jeremiah 17, 8 through 10. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, who spreads out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat comes. But her leaf shall be green. Can't have green leaves if the weeds are choking it out. Even this time, we were in Brazil, and they don't understand that. This weed was growing up the tree, and I was like, I am got the machete, and I'm hitting around it, and I had the guy, we took it down. I'm like, it'll get too out of control, and it'll choke out the life. This was just last week. And shall not be careful in the year of drought. See, it's okay when it's raining a lot. People see, they get around, they watch t- church on TV, they're around other Christians and they're saying little words, right? You know, so there's rain coming. But when there's drought, which is coming in the world now, the darkness, things are shaking, everything's happening. You know, you, you, like you're building on the rock, right? He's saying if you're not rooted in Him deeply, like you're built on the rock, right? It's like when the storms and the floods come, well, the fl- storms and the floods, if you don't have no root within you, you're going to be plucked up real quick and tossed and thrown, and then you're going to have nothing because you'll probably be thrown in the ocean, which is salt, which has no nutrients, and you can't live off salt. You have to live off fresh water. So all of a sudden, you're being tossed and all of a sudden, but if your roots go down like the oak tree, they also use in the Bible about being an oak tree. But what? By the river of life, by the word of God. He even says in Ezekiel, be as a person in the river, not just your your ankle, you know, all the way submerged in him. And it talks about, so he's saying right here, deep roots, because yeah, it might look like everything's okay because it rains all the time. So it's raining every other day and it's, so the top of it's getting and you're getting, but... What happens when there's a drought? What happens when things get shaken? What happens when you don't have the money you are? What happens when you lose your job? Are you rooted in Christ? Right here, rooted in Him. When the drought comes, the year of the drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. That means even when the world is shaking, you won't shake. Even when things are going wrong, you'll be established in Him. Even when things happen... You're not going to be tossed to and fro. You're not going to be double-minded. You're going to be stable in all that you think and do. This is the promise for you. The heart, then it ends like this from yielding fruit. Then it goes back and she's like, oh, he's talking about a tree. And then boom, here comes Jeremiah, the second time about the heart. Again, the heart is deceitful, deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? God knows it. Don't let the devil think we've arrived. Father, we ask you to help us to guard our hearts. And even in this next coming few days that we do a a deep work, God, that we go and we till that garden, we till that heart. We ask, we even make the areas that are that are a bunch of weeds that we that we till it out and that we get it ready, and that you plant new seed, seeds of life, seeds of patience, goodness temperance, long-suffering, all the things that manifest the kingdom of God, love, truth. Father, where the kingdom of God is not in meat and drink, but in joy, righteousness, and peace, God. Let my garden be that peaceful place. Father, I want you to come to my garden. I want you to come and sup with us today, God. Father, we ask you to forgive us for... For the wicked heart, we thank you, God, that you've given us a heart of flesh for that heart of stone. Father, we thank you that you've given us the cross that we're not counted out yet. We thank you, Lord, that if we still have breath, we can still be right with you. We can still move in grace. We can still be filled with the Holy Spirit. We can still fulfill our destiny and the dreams and purposes that you have for us. So, Father, we just curse every lie of the enemy and receive every word of truth from your spirit today, God. And we ask you, Father, to forgive us for when we get wayward and we get lazy or we fall asleep. Father, sound the alarm in our heart and mind and let us know how important our heart is. 
Because without life, we're dead. We're dead. In Jesus' name, amen.